Hello, it's me, Avenel. And I brought my own disco ball again because it makes me feel better when I talk about things that make me stressed out a little bit. Maybe I'll do this. I'll do the red one. <laughs> I look evil. Um, that's kind of evil looking too. I don't know why. I guess we'll stick with blue. Anyway, um, and I have sparkles. Sparkles make me feel better also. This it's not actually a necklace. It's a piece of ribbon that was sitting here and I just stuck it on with a binder clip. Anyway, but it looks like fancy jewelry, but it's not. Anyway, so the double-edged sword of the mental health stuff, for lack of a better word. Um, I mean, I'm sure that there is a better word. I just, I lack that word right now. Um, so for those of us who have had, um, I guess you'd say disruptive mental issues from an early age, like that couldn't be overlooked for a long time. Like I have started like being in the mental health stuff pretty young, like for me, junior high, I think. Um, but I was dealing with the stuff for as far back as I can remember, but, um, junior high started going counseling, started all that. And then as I got into high school, it was more and more of that. And then, you know, my twenties, almost all of my twenties were spent in like support groups and reading books, listening to books, doing workshops and, um, classes and, you know, just mental health, mental health, mental health, right. Um, coping mechanisms, coping, not thriving because all you're doing is treading water. But, um, anyway, yeah, I'm gonna skip that topic because it'll get me off topic. So, um, but the double-edged sword thing here is that, um, the more you understand what mentally healthy is, the more you understand when you're being spoken to or treated in a way that is abusive, um, a lot of times not intended, just letting you know the world is just in general a pretty freaking abusive place. Um, but the more you understand what a healthy workplace looks like, what healthy relationships are like, what, um, how you should be treated when you're being listened to, when you're being ignored, when you're being um, dismissed. And the more you are learning how to recognize those things and understand those things and clearly communicate and all of that kind of thing, the double-edged sword is this. There's a lot of people that are, um, that don't ever get into this stuff, that don't ever get into the mental health stuff. And when they do, they're doing it for somebody else. They're thinking of somebody else constantly. They're not thinking of themselves in the same way. And a lot of these people tend to be in positions where, um, they're higher up or, um, they're just in a place where I don't know what it is, but stuff just doesn't seem to stick to them. Right. Um, and so they don't seem to realize the, the abusive things, the bullying, the, those kind of things. Right. Um, and, and cause sometimes it's, I guess there's like a new term. I don't know. I just heard it tonight. I mean, I kn had heard the term. I just didn't know what it meant, but gaslighting, I guess is what they're calling it. Like the, the, the type of personality that makes everybody else around them kind of doubt themselves instead of content, because sometimes like to push forward and try and get help or try and be clear or try and communicate or say that this isn't okay. People will try and make you doubt yourself. So you back down. And there's like a lot of people who are really good at that. And a lot of times they're not the ones who are going to support groups and going to, you know, that it don't know why, but, um, I'm not here to point fingers at this, that, or the other person or throw around words like gaslighting. I don't, I don't really even know if that's accurate. I'm just trying to say that the double-edged sword of the mental health game is not, it's not a game. I'm going to stick with stuff because it's not a game. <laughs> um, is that the more you know and the more you understand, <laughs> the more depressing the world is. Like, really, I'm not, I'm not playing. Like, it's like you need mental health for your mental health, right? Because you can't fix other people. You can't have people understand the concepts that are so clear to you. You can't um, make a workplace function smoothly the way that it should. You can't explain to people what leadership is when you're the one trying to follow the lack of leadership, you know, like there's just stuff that's, that we can't fix. And that's just kind of, um, perpetually there. And then once you, so I'm not saying it's good, like the way that I was 
living my life before I started, the lights started to come on, which was only recently, um, after I finally got diagnosed with ADHD, which is not a complete diagnosis, but anyway, that one did help me a lot, but I'm getting sidetracked. Um, but once you start to, um, once you start to see it and understand it and, um, you can't go back, you know, cause before it, it's not good. I was living in a thing where I was constantly making everything my fault and oh, well, I'm so, why can't I just, and I don't know anything and I can't trust my own opinions and I don't know what should I do. You know, just totally trapped in that and then feeling guilty and ashamed all the time and feeling like I'm always having to assure everybody that everything's okay when nothing's okay ever. But like, I only am good at reassuring people that things are okay because that's the only skill I ever learned. Um, anyways, and then treading water, the, the um, coping mechanisms, like just barely hanging on. Um, anyway, um, that's a crappy place to be. But now that I've got these things and I understand some of the things, this isn't super better, like, um, because I can't unsee it now. When people are talking to me in a way that is making me go back, like tempting me to go back into that, oh, well, maybe I'm the one that's wrong or I'm, the, and you know, push me back into that thing. Then I get angry because that's the only way I know how to like stand up for myself. And I'm not saying I always externally, sometimes I do, but a lot of times it's more internally where I'm like, no, I'm not going to be told that because I know what you're doing. And, um, Basically, I guess what I'm saying is like, it's kind of like the matrix. You get like unplugged from the matrix. You can't go back. Like you can get plugged back in, but you're like, dude, I know I'm just like plugged into the matrix. You know, like, I don't know. That's one way of thinking of it. If you've seen that and you know what I'm talking about. But if not, it's just kind of like, yeah, you can't unsee it. You can't unknow it. And you can't like, and it's frustrating because you know, it's like, as you get into the mental health stuff, you also know that it's not like, okay mental health wise to be coaching everybody else on their mental health that's not my problem that's not my business that's I got enough to deal with right here so um but I defending boundaries against the onslaught from people that are that don't have boundaries and think that it's okay to not have their boundary and it, it just like think that it's just complicated and it can just be really discouraging is all I'm saying and I'm not saying this in a way to just be like, um, so we're going to fix it now. I have no idea. No idea, y'all. I'm just saying, like, understand that people who are doing the work of mental health and doing that stuff and going to support groups, doing all of this, that it's really grueling work. Every single step of it is grueling. It's not like you're going to, like, a little party or something with your friends. It's hard. And it's like, I don't know. It's It's rough. And then going back in places, people kind of, there's a certain group of people who haven't dealt with this kind of stuff who seem to think that like, you go to like mental health things and then you're like better. <laughs> That's not how it works. It's like, I have to do two times the work all the time for every little tiny thing, sometimes like 10 times the work just to cope and get by um, with what I've done in mental health stuff. And then, but people have this expectation that I'm suddenly going to just be like other people or something. I don't know. Anyways, I'm, it's, it's all here. It makes perfect sense up here and I just can't get the right words, <laughs> the right order. But, um, hopefully I've made enough of my point. And I mean, I know all y'all are smart, so you'll figure out and think about it. Cause that's really what I'm putting it out there more as like meditation food, like things to think about and consider. And also for other people who have been in this place that keep feeling like, because sometimes early on, I kept going, well, I kept still trying to make it me. that was the problem all the time, everywhere, because I felt like if I can make it me, then I can maybe fix it. Right. But instead, it's been coming to a place of disillusionment where I realized like I can't fix it. And this is kind of the world is kind of just broken and people are broken and there's stuff that I don't know how to do. And I can only try to do the next right thing for me and keep, um, my boundaries up and keep doing the right thing. And, and I guess, I guess what I'm saying is like, it's, 
maybe it's just that disillusionment of it's not going to just suddenly be better. And I think that people around people with mental health stuff especially need to understand this. People who are going through the mental health stuff, they will have this disillusionment on their own in their own time of realizing like, okay, like it's, it, it, I am still treading water. Like, okay, I'm a little better at it now, but I'm still treading water, you know? And maybe, and there are times like when I first um, started getting treated for ADHD, it was a huge improvement, but then it brought with it some other stuff, which I'll get into in another video. But, um, but yeah, I guess it's just kind of like, we're not all okay. And that's okay. It's hard, but it's kind of, I think I've heard it like, you know, people talk about like, oh, you lose all this weight and then you're still, that's not really going to make you happy if you weren't happy before that. You're not going to suddenly be happy all the time. You meet this perfect person and you get married. It's great for a little bit, but it's going to go back to, okay, I still have, life is still life, you know? And, um, and I, I guess, yeah, it's frustrating. Mental health is frustrating because the people who seem to totally inflict so much damage on other people's mental health seem to think they don't need help and seem to think they don't have a problem. And so it's just, it's, I don't know. It's hard, especially in workplaces and stuff where you're trying to like be professionally put in, but you're just going, oh my goodness, this is so not okay. <laughs> um, anyway, I probably said more than enough and I don't even know if it made sense. So I'll stop it. I'm going to do this like a couple more times because I just like to.